Another one, Ryan. Imagine that. You gotta love early season walleye. Pitching jigs to pre throughout post spawn fish, and with favorable odds of catching a trophy and taking eaters home. Spring walleye fishing is an annual tradition for many. But as water temperatures slowly climb, walleye start to move towards the first major break line and other structures. While fan casting jigs can put you on fish, pretty hard to beat combining today's electronics and crankbaits to cover water quickly and efficiently. Even in cooler waters, crankbaits can prove deadly, and there's a time and place where areas holding willing walleyes will also kick up quality smallmouth bass. In our book, it's a big time bonus. I bet you wish you caught him. <laughs> I do wish I caught him. I absolutely do. <laughs> Oop, there's one. On Oof. today's edge, James and oh Nick Lindner chase spring like walleyes that. in transition, putting the bead on fish in transitions from skinny water to breaks in deeper weeds. A little bit better sized fish. Huh. A little bit deeper. One thing when you look at these big flats, you have to realize that these fish are uh, actively hunting. And they're, so they're moving around a lot. That's one thing that's sort of always intriguing to me because you go out one day and the wind's blowing from one direction, then you come out the next day and you fish the same spots and the fish have repositioned or they moved around. That's why crankbaits are so effective. It just has the ability to cover a tremendous amount of water. Comb water. That's the strong suit for crankbait fishing. And they definitely work, boy. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. There, oh, there he is. There he is. Ooh, ooh. I think I gotta change something. You're catching all what? the fish here. Ooh. That's a good one. Where is that? It's over on the left hand side of the console. There we Man, go. He's not a big boy. It's a nice one, though. There we go. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe it's not even a netable one. It's not even that, even that big. That's a nice little wild though for starters. He smoked that bait pretty good, pretty good. We got the wind blowing in. And the wallies are shallow and biting. We're gonna look at uh, crankbait strategies for shallow water wallies. You know, crankbaits are phenomenally effective uh, means to cover water quickly in shallow. And right now, it's early season. Water temperature is about 53 degrees. And we have a lot of fish spread out on shallow flats. And there's probably no better time to throw the crankbait. Oh, there we go. Got him? Yep, I do got him. Huh, that's a good one. Ooh, see, he may be actually shallower. He hit it right Ooh, there, Oh, a... I just had one too. Really? Yeah, I just Ooh. had another one. I'm gonna pin the boat here for a second or two. I think that's a good call. Yeah in the right area. Let's see. Is it a netable model? Uh, we'll see, I don't know. Okay. It was a nice hit though. Okay. It's a nice one. Here you go, I'll take a look. Yeah, I'll oh. take them. Come here, buddy. There we go. There you go, you nice. You need the pliers? Uh, yeah, this is a kind of a dangerous deal here with the trebles. Ooh. Pop him off. There we go. Nice. Nice, nice little guy. Well, that was a nice one, Nick. You know, one thing that's uh, really critical when it comes to crankbait fishing, walleyes, any fish for that matter, is depth selection based on the bait you're fishing. Right now we're fishing with these uh, glass scatter wraps. And the interesting thing is, is what you wanna do is when you pick a bait, is to pick a bait that'll run probably a foot or two foot deeper than the depth of water we're fishing. Right now we're fishing about eight to 10 foot of water. This uh, glass scatter will run anywhere between about 12 and 14 foot on a long cast fishing with braided line and uh, with a fluorocarbon leader. But if, as you can see, that's a really a pretty looking bait. Yeah, that bottom contact is very important because that fish that I caught 
cam right after I take the bottom. Bottom, yeah. See, that's one of the critical portions of cranking, and that makes it, that's for any different species of fish. Yeah. We're gonna hold the boat. I'm sort of spot locked in here, and we'll fan cast here a little bit more. After Nick hooked that fish, I actually had a strike directly after he hooked that fish. So maybe we got a, a few of our buddies in this area. You may ask, why would I want a bait that runs deeper than the depth of water I'm fishing? Well, the biggest thing is once I reel that bait down there, I can actually change and really slow down the speed of the bait. I can pulse it and st stop and go the bait with the go. bait. And that way I don't have to, you know, constantly be reeling trying yeah, to get the bait there. to depth. There, oh, there he is. Feels like a good one, but I don't suspect it's a walleye. For some reason, I'm thinking this is a bass. Of the bronze variety? Yep. And it's, it's a good one, too. Huh. There's no place like this. Yes! <laughs> Fishermen are always looking for an edge. Moors, locations, the right equipment. Here's one edge mechanics have been using for decades to help engines run smoother and last longer. It's Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam works to do a few important things exceptionally well. Cleans dirty engine deposits, lubricates critical engine areas, and helps to protect the entire fuel system from harmful fuel residues. To me, this stuff is like a miracle in a can. This segment is brought to you by Gill Technical Fishing Gear. You know, I use mapping all, all the time. It's probably one of the, the biggest tools in angling today. And right now we're crankbait fishing and we're trying to target these fish anywhere between seven and 12 foot of water. So I put my depth highlight at the shallow end, about seven foot, in the deep end, about 12 foot, and you can see what it does, it enables you to really, gives you a really clear picture of that zone. But beyond that, you'll notice that I actually have uh, coordinates on this particular spot. We haven't fished this spot yet, but I'm gonna drive over it with my side imagery and show you what, the, what I'm actually highlighting. Boy, look at that one there. Oh, look at that stuff there. Oh, there's another good patch right there. We'll mark that one there. I sort of try to put it on the biggest boulders. You can see what that, just scattered big boulders in through here. But you can see there's just strips of this stuff and you can see how the fish are roaming around in here. Ooh, look at that. That, that boulder there is about the size of the boat. This mega imagery is just unbelievable how uh, accurate it is. You can see this is clean sand where the rocks start and then you got these big isolated boulders and then some bigger rock piles in here. And that's where these fish are moving around. The walleyes are feeding in these spots in here. There's another great big boulder. As a matter of fact, that's worthwhile. That's another mark. Oop, there's one. Ooh, that's a good one there, Nick. Is it? Yeah, that's a better one. A netter? Yeah, whoa. Well, maybe it's a big brown one. 
Oh, is it coming up or staying down? Like a big walleye at first, but now I'm sort of suspect. I think we're getting a little bit on the program here, a little bit better. You can see I just spot locked the. Uh, no, nah, it's got to be a brown one. He's sort of coming up, I think. Yeah, it's a great big one too. Ooh, Ooh. look at that guy there. Ooh. Big old suitcase. Ooh. Let's get her up. Whoop. Whoa! There you go. Ooh, look at that thing. Yeah. Wow. That's what a, a real tumble art there. Yeah. Yeah, good. You can take him off. Okay. Huh? Boy, he just pounded it. Ooh. Doink. Wow. Wow. There you, oh, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Wow. I bet you wish you caught him. <laughs> I do wish I caught him. I absolutely do. <laughs> he might have some some buddies down there. There we go. I like that guy there. That was my new favorite. <laughs> back, back to the front of the bo boat. You can see how this uh, spot lock is such a fabulous feature. You know what I mean? If I was in the wind, I would be on the other side of this point by now. You know what I mean? And what we've been doing is really strategically using the trolling motor to be moved. We're drifting with the wind or control drifting. We hit a fish and then you sort of hold your position. And it's really great for crankbait fishing. There are a lot of different fishing situations. It could be really an advantageous for fishing, for boat control. Yeah, it's kind of nice when you're not 100 feet off your spot from landing your fish. <laughs> Ooh, there's one. There you go. Yeah. It's a little bit better one. Come here, buddy. Boy, you just ticked it just when it came up off the bottom. And just started coming up right at the end of the cast. This guy hit it. Not a biggie, but a nice wally. Come here, buddy. Go. Oh, you gotta be careful with these guys. Not a biggie, but a nice one. Boy, a healthy guy. Look at that guy. Perfect specimen. Beautiful fish, isn't it? Get her back in the water. Boy, do you know what, Nick? The weirdest thing is, we had a little bit of a cold front, and I thought a lot of the fish would uh, have the tendency to push out a little bit, but the few fish we've been catching, most of them have been up shallower. The shallower it seems like, the better off we are. So, we'll keep stay on that program. What about the, the 10 foot curve? There we go. Oh, that's a better one. There you go. Ooh, that's our see the. Oh, that's a, a bass. Sh shallow's the key. Oh, brownie. Let us make this absolutely clear. The days of wasted casts and missed opportunities are over. New Mega Imaging takes fishing into the megahertz range for the first time. Because higher frequency sonar means higher frequency of this. Without a doubt, it's the most detailed picture of the world below ever. And it's only from Humminbird. Lund Boats has two smoking deals for making memories this summer. Lund 1650 Rebel XS is an incredible boat at an incredible price. This boat is filled with features like side and center rod lockers, aerated live well, and a heavy duty trailer with fold away tongue. Add the optional flip up seating and ski pylon for family fun. Or choose Lund 1625 Fury XL. It has all the fish catching features you'd expect from Lund at a jaw dropping price. For more information and a free catalog, go to Lundboats.com. Auto stow and deploy, power trim, and your choice of iPilot or iPilot link. <laughs> Altera from Minn Kota. We can't believe it either. Yeah? Stop working right now! Look outside. Is this spreadsheet weather? No. It's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass. Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. 
The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. There's one. That's that's a real one there. <laughs> that's my one. favorite. God darn it. It's hard to beat a good mixed bag. Unfortunate. Small mouth and walleyes. <laughs> what, what we got here. Yeah. Oh, don't move, buddy. Oh, there you go. A lot of these fish are actually, uh, the shiners are coming up to spawn. That's what we're feeding on. You know, you think about to you, depth is unquestionably one of the most critical aspects when you're crankbait fishing or for any type of presentation that the bait's running obviously at the at the right depth. And then comes speed. How fast is the bait moving? And third is color. And if possible, you want to tune into what the fish are naturally feeding on. In this particular lake, you have perch, but you also have a lot of shiners up spawning along these rock uh, in spring like this. And that's a really pretty nice shiner match. There, oh, there he is. Wow. Wally. Like a Waldo. A little bit better one. Pop this bad boy in the net. You know, it's sort of interesting, you know, when you look at these, uh, the way we're cranking like this and actually how the wind affects these fish on these reef systems. And it actually repositions the fish a lot. You know, you come up and the fish will be on this side of the reef when the wind is blowing from the east in this particular case. But it's interesting in the fact when it turns around and comes from the, the west or from that direction, a lot of the fish will reposition on the underwater uh, contours on the west side of the bar or the active fish, which is really important. I mean, once you, you have to understand the makeup of the, uh, these underwater structures and where the fish position at dependent on the wind direction. But as a whole, when you get up on the tops of these things, what happens, it has the, ten the fish have the tendency to really spread out where you have like little pods of three or four fish here, three or four fish there. When they're up in shallower water, as the fish move into deeper water, you get sort of somewhat of an accordion effect where the fish dump into deeper water and they collect together. You know, one thing that's sort of important in crankbait fishing is the line you're fishing with. For walleyes, I actually use 832 braid. This is 10 pound test, 832 with about a four foot piece of 10 pound Invisalign fluorocarbon leader. The thing is what that floral or the braid does is enable you to make a really long cast, which is nice to be able to get the bait to run it for a longer distance at depth. Number two, you have really supreme feel. And what I mean by that is when I'm pulling the bait, I can actually feel the bait vibrating. I can feel the bait if it's intermittently hitting the bottom and you just have a good uh, sense of how the bait is moving in the water column. And the other thing is, is it actually helps to drive the bait deeper because of its thin diameter. Yeah. Nipped at it and then took it the second time. Oops. Huh. See what we got here. Wally. It's a tough. Ooh. Ooh. Big Waldo. Ooh. Nice one. That is a better fish. Yep. Mm. Net boy. For 70 years, you've known us for our high performance rods. Now, it's time to meet our machinery. 32 pairs of hands. Touch, craft, and test each St. Croix rod. Overkill, not with our reputation on the line. St. Croix, the best rods on earth. Cold weather got you down? <laughs> Didn't think so. In the Midwest, we don't fear weather. We embrace it. We live outdoors. We work and we play outdoors. We hike, we hunt and we fish. This is a winter wonderland, and we own it. We were born in the Midwest. We are outdoors. We are Mills Fleet Farm.
Can't get enough Angling Edge? Wish you could learn more than you saw on TV? You can. Angling Edge DVDs dive deep into fish catching techniques that couldn't fit on air. It's like extra innings or overtime of Angling Edge. Choose from dozens of titles featuring your favorite freshwater fish. Purchase five DVDs at the incredible low price of $25. That's five DVDs for just 25 bucks. Purchase two sets and get free shipping too. Visit anglingedge.com to place your order. Yeah, hey, Linder here for Angling Buzz. I'm Tony Roach. Ray Rolston. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. The Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay. Lake Sakakawea. Lake Winnie Region. Northern Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. Check us out on the web. Current up to date fishing info from the best anglers in the Midwest. Learn from the pros at anglingbuzz.com. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Hmm. Net boy. Don't call me net boy. I can call you net boy oh, if I want. Oh, 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 dad, what are you doing? What? <laughs> what I'd like doing ah. that just for show wow well it was it was very showy of you what? that was just for show that's a good one okay it's a wow little, a little fatty there i like him <laughs> and you know what i had to switch colors what did you go to well I, I was running the perch but now i had to go a little bit more of a showy color with the purple oops and i think i can get away with not using a there we go Here's some players. Oh, you got him off. Yep, I got him. Yeah, there you nice go. Nice fish. Now you're talking. Yeah, huh. absolutely. Oh, cool. Well, let's get this healthy little run. Let's get this beauty back in the water here. So it's spring of the year, post-spawn walleyes. These fish are spread out, and really probably the most efficient way to cover water to find these fish is with crankbaits, which is what we're doing. Now, one thing that's really key with throwing crankbaits is your rod and your reel. Now, da like Dad said earlier, right now we are using braided line, which is really great for castability and getting the crank down, but it's also important that you pair that with the right rod and reel. Now, when I'm picking a rod and reel for this application, I like to optimize for two things. And one, that's casting distance, and two is keeping those fish buttoned with the crankbaits. And so for casting, I like a longer rod, seven foot, seven and a half. I happen to be using a St. Croix Legend Elite right now. And I like the longer rod for casting. And this rod's a medium power, which is good to keep the fish buttoned. Now, I also, it also has a fast action tip at the end. And that's, that helps with the casting. Now, down below here, I'm actually running a Daiwa 2000 Fuego, and I really, really like this reel because it has a great drag, which is extremely important to keep these walleyes buttoned on crankbaits. Oh, oop, oop. Boom, I don't know what that is. I think that's one of our brown buddies again. I th well, maybe not. Boy, I don't know. Well, if it's there not, we might need a net. It's a bigger fish, whatever it is. Yeah, nice walleye, better one. A little bit deeper. Come here. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Where are you at? No, just hang on. Wait, there you go. There you go. There we go. There we go. Nice fish. Yeah, there you go. Come here, buddy. Look at the Where head on that. That big girl. Yeah. There we go. A little bit better sized fish. Huh. A little bit deeper. It's one thing with these, this time of the year, these fish are really moving around a lot based on the weather patterns, uh, wind direction, you know, and the attitude of the fish. The fish are moving up and down, you know, dependent on their ac activity level. But one thing, when you look at these big flats, you have to realize that these fish are uh, actively hunting. And they're, so they're moving around a lot. That's one thing that's sort of always intriguing to me because you go out one day and the wind's blowing from one direction, then you come out the next day and you fish the same spots and the fish have repositioned or they moved around. 
That's why crankbaits are so effective. They just have the ability to cover a tremendous amount of water. Comb water. That's the strong suit for crankbait fishing, and they definitely work, boy. Hi everybody, Al Linder here, along with my nephew Dan Linder, who shoots and edits a big bunch of the Edge television series yep. and has for many, 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 many years. We work together on all different kinds of projects. And I want to welcome you to another one of our closes. It's Thank a you. blessing to have you here. Yep, yep. So I guess um, one thing I was thinking about was <clears throat> my parents taught me a ton of lessons growing up and one important lesson was prayer and every morning we get up and pray and um, I continue that with my family nowadays I got uh, Jack who's three gonna be four and Lily's gonna be two and taking him to daycare or preschool now I put my hand in the back and we pray every single day and uh, <clears throat> we obviously pray and thank the Lord for the Lord and for family and for friends and for work and stuff like that. And I thought it was so cute the other day and Jack pops up out of the back and he thanks the Lord for turkeys because <laughs> there's turkeys on the side of the road. We love turkeys, right? Thanks the, thanks the Lord for Spider-Man. And I thought it was just such a blessing <laughs> <laughs> that he was thanking the Lord for these things that he thought was so big to him, you know what I mean? Which, which they are, you know? And <clears throat> I got to thinking about that. And uh, so many times you wrap yourself up and you're praying for all of these big things and you forget about the small things. I mean, every day that you got and you wake up and you walk on this earth, there is a blessing mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. And there's somebody out there that loves you. I don't care if you're living under a bridge, there's somebody that cares about you and wants the best for you. You know, and uh, that was just a blessing that Jack kind of taught me. And the other thing, I guess, was on top of that, you know, like when we'd pray and sometimes I'd forget to, I'm always praying for somebody else or something else. And I, I have to, you have to remember to be selfish sometimes and pray for things that you need. Mm -hmm. You know, for mm -hmm. me, I, I need, I pray for myself for peace and patience. And with kids, and that's part of the reason I'm just praying for patience. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Uh, you know, prayer is, is simply <clears throat> talking to God from your heart. That's what prayer really is. And when you're three years old, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what's important in your life is Spider-Man. But that's talking to God right. from your heart. Yeah. Well, when you get a little bit older <laughs> and in business, yeah. Patience and peace yeah, exactly. uh, 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 in the world we live in, that's a little bit more of a priority. Right. But prayer, bottom line, and God listens to that, it's you talking to Him from your heart. I don't care if you're three years old, 30 years old, or well into your 70s. <laughs> yeah, right. Prayer from your heart is what it's all about, and that's what moves them. Hey, I had to share that with, with you from Dan's perspective and my perspective. I was really blessed to hear that, mm -hmm. and I could see little Jack doing it. I love it, I love it, I love <laughs> it. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.